Hi guys, I'm Charlotte. Now I'll be showing you how to use the GLM procedure in SAS. Your teacher has told you to sign up for SAS and that you'll be coding statistical analyses for your assignments. Your first thought might be yikes, but don't worry. In this video, I'll be showing you how to use one of the many statistical inference tools in SAS, the GLM procedure. This procedure uses the method of the least squares to generate linear models, the GLM literally standing for general linear models. It can be used to investigate data with linear regressions or if you want to run an analysis of variance. In class, you will be using this procedure to create ANOVA tables, which compare the population means for two or more independent samples. First, you will want to determine what your hypotheses are. Your null should be that the population means are equal, and your, your alternative should be that at least one population is different from the rest. In the past, you have been focusing on the T statistic, but for this procedure, it is an F statistic. This is found through investigating the deviation in squared units and is done by dividing the mean squares between by the mean squares within. The former value is a measure of how far the group means vary from the grand mean, and the latter is a measure of how far individual observations within each group vary from their sample mean, or in simpler terms, how much of it is due to random chance. The F statistic represents how many times larger the variability of difference is to the variability of randomness. Let's look at an example to see how to program this into SAS. For this data set, I will be uploading data ranging over three fields and looking at the grades of 32 students. It will include data for a type of academic course, either sciences or arts, a time of day, either early or late, and the grade the student got in the course. When you're using the GLM procedure, you want to make sure that at least one field is categorical or qualitative, and at least one field is quantitative. In this case, we have two qualitative variables and one quantitative. To start out, type data, and then name your data. I'll name mine edu for simplicity's sake. End with a semicolon and go to the next line. Then you want to input your fields. So I will type input and then course, because that is the first field that I have here. Then you want to type a dollar sign to let SAS know that you're inputting a new field. Next, I will type time because that is the next field that we have in our data. Put another dollar sign. And then the final field is grade and with a semicolon and add a next line. I have my data pasted in already. So if you don't have this data, you can input your own. And before you continue, you want to make sure you add cards to let SAS know that you are now looking at the data. Make sure you type each field in the order you listed above with the space in between to tell SAS which item is which. Lastly, don't forget to add a semicolon at the end of all your data on a new line to tell SAS that you are now moving on to call the procedure. So now we are actually going to get into the GLM part. First, you want to type PROC, short for procedure, and then GLM. Then call your data. So I will type data equals edu, and with a semicolon. On the next line, type class, and then your categorical value. So in this case, it would either be course or time. I will just use course. So I will type class course, and then end with a semicolon. On the next line, you're gonna want to type model, then your quantitative variable. So I will type grade equals course. You want your quantitative variable, then an equal sign, and then the same qualitative variable you used before. The equal sign does not mean it is equal in value to it. It just means that it is derived from the value or explained by it. So the grade is explained by the course. Finally, your last line of code We'll run through the function with run and then an ending semicolon. Hit the little man in the top corner to run through your data. Check your log to make sure that you have no errors. They would be in red if you did. 
and here are our results. This is what should pop up for the results of your PROC GLM. As you can see, it has the course that we input and the number of data lines used to derive our data. Now down here, your source column right here tells us if the row is between or within the calculations. Model indicates between and error indicates within. The column DF means degrees of freedom. For model or between, it is your I value minus one. For error or within, it is your degrees minus the I value. And finally, for the corrected total, it is the sum of the two previous values. So one plus 30 equals 31. The sum, of squares, the sum of squares column has the sum of squares of the deviations between and within the group means and the grand mean. The total of these values is found right here. The mean squares column are the mean sums of the previous column. How you find this is to divide each sum of squares, so these numbers here, divided by the degrees of freedom column. So 162 divided by one is 162, and same for here. This F value column is, surprise, your F value. If the null hypothesis is true, the value for mean squares between is equal to the value for mean squares within, and is expected that the F would be one. There is more evidence for the alternative hypothesis as F gets larger. 5.9 would be considered pretty large because it's that many times greater. Lastly, this column is the beloved p-value. If you're making a deviations graph, mark this point on it and always shade to the right. There is also the grand mean here. It will say whatever your quantitative variable is and then mean. So yours might not say grade, it could say count or sales or whatever you coded in. All the rest of this stuff is not relevant to what you'll be covering in class, so do not worry about it. The information that will be most important is the test statistic or the F value, the P value, the degrees of freedom, and the grand mean. In summary, the GLM procedure generates an ANOVA table that compares the population means for two or more independent samples. The F test statistic measures the ratio between variability in our data it represents how many times larger the variability of difference is to the variability of randomness. The closer this value is to one, the more that the truth favors the null hypothesis. On a graph, the F distribution is right skewed, always includes values increasing from zero, and you always want to make sure you shade to the right. So that's how to use and interpret the GLM procedure in SAS. Have fun coding.